All right, I think we got it. All right, we got 26 people. I'm gonna go ahead and get started because people that didn't um, or aren't here can watch the recorded version later. So, like I was saying on my video earlier, I don't know if you guys saw it or not, but I have been making these zipper pouches, as you all know, if you've been following me. Um, but I cheated on this one. I used a placemat that I bought at Walmart to make this. This was $3.97, I think, or something like that. And I turned it into this. Likewise, I used this placemat that I've also bought at Walmart to make this pouch that I posted online today. It's all flattened out here, but... So this is made out of a placemat, so... See? This is the inside. Inside of the bag. So everybody was going nuts. Where'd you get your fabric? So I thought, let's go ahead and do the video. <clears throat> um, this one I just picked up today. And how cute's that gonna be on the inside? Um, oh, let me grab one more over here. Sorry, forgot I had some other ones. This was another one I picked up at Walmart. These are all Pioneer Woman. So these are gonna all make super cute bags and it's really thick material. It's already got, I don't know if it has interfacing or not, but it's it's a, like an outdoor canvas. And then here's another one. And the ones I bought at Walmart are uh, all of these are three dollars and ninety seven cents I believe and these are all from Walmart these are all the pioneer woman brand all of these were three dollars and ninety seven cents you could also pick up a tablecloth she has all these prints in tablecloths which will give you a whole bunch of fabric um, I don't have another one of these but this was one that was kind of like this one so when you ask what size, it really depends on, uh, like these, I had to cut the, the wavy edges off, but I had considered making a purse like this, or a pouch, and tucking these in like this. I thought that would be kind of cute. And then you could leave the wavy edge on there and just make a cute little pouch like this. So that's an idea, but it really depends on what you're doing. This one that I made out of the quilted pouch is approximately 11 inches long and you can make it higher or you can make it shorter or higher. It just depends how much you box your corners. But this one's about three inches tall. You could also, yes, you could also make bowl koozies, but they would be small because a bowl koozie you have to start with a square. So by the time you square this up, um, That would probably, it would probably work. But yeah, you can do all kinds of things with these and you don't have to do the quilting. Now this is one I just picked up at Target and how cute is that? This is a placemat and it's got these little fringy things and I thought this would be a really cute, even like a little hand purse for, or an evening purse. I would probably put some stabilizer in it because this one's a little, little more flimsy but I thought that was really cute or even just to make a zipper pouch. And this one was $4.99. Oops, I forget. I'm watching you on my computer, but you're being filmed up there. All right, so which one do you guys want to see me make? you want to see me make this one, or do you want to see a standard zipper pouch? Any choices? Any... Just the standard zipper pouch like this one? The box one. <laughs> All right. The blue one or the quilted one? Let's put it that way. I like to use Walmart pads for my tablet cover. Yes, that would work. 
quilted, quilted. Looks like we got more quilted ones. Okay, so we're gonna do this one. These are super easy, you guys. So I'm gonna make the exact same thing, although we might make this one a little bit deeper, but um, get my thing off. Okay, the first thing you're going to do is sew your zipper on. So we gotta pick a zipper. You want a zipper that's longer than your short end. So let's see, that probably says, this is 14 by 19. So I need at least a 14 inch zipper. I think I have some like 18. So let's see what color zipper we want. I did yellow. No, I did blue on that one. I might do, let's see. I have some really long zippers here. about yellow or I could do green no we're into yellow all right so there's that so the first thing you're going to do and you guys I'm telling you this is so easy you're going to move your tags and you're going to take your placemat the side that you want to be on the outside like this is that light too bright Let's turn that back a little bit and you're going to line your zipper up right side up so the zipper pulls up just like this and you're going to sew that right along the edge so normally we're sewing it like this when we're doing pouches but because we're not putting a liner in this, because the liner is already there for us, we're just going to sew this just like you would right where you'd want it to be. Okay, so your zipper, can you guys see it? We're going to sew it just like that. All right, let me grab my glasses. I haven't been working on this sewing machine, so give me a second to get one going. All right. There we go. Now we're cooking with gas. sewed that side of the zipper on. Get an extra. Come on. There we go. So that's what that looks like. Now all we're going to do is fold this side up and sew the zipper the same way on this side, okay? Now <clears throat> it's much easier if you unzip it. Then you can get this under here. And let's go ahead and let's pin it first. So we know it's lined up. And let me grab my clips. Clip it on that end, and I'm going to clip it on this end. These would make great um, Christmas gifts for the girls in your family, or you could use a masculine looking one and make it like a dab kit. All right, now I'm going to unfold it or unzip it and put a few clips in there. Just because since it's unzipped, it's a little bit harder to keep track of. You 
easy to go off course. So I'm just clipping it with the Wonder Clips. clip out of my way. Again, you just want to make sure you keep keep everything lined up. And then we're going to put that down. The threads behind us. Now we're going to, it just takes a little bit of maneuvering with that zipper unzipped, but it's not really difficult. Just got to get it lined up. All right, so we're going to take a few stitches, back stitch. Make sure you don't get it too close to your zipper because then it's hard to, uh, it's easy to catch in the teeth. Getting close to doing that. zipper in place. Some threads are I need to cut. But basically it looks like that. So that by itself would be a cute purse. And if you wanted, you could put little zipper tabs right here. They would hang off the edge. Yes, they're called Wonder Clips. And if you wanted to make that into a regular pouch, you would just turn it wrong side out and then sew across your short ends. Okay? But if you want to make this style, we got to do something a little bit different. Let me grab these threads off of here. I'm out of my way. All right, so we're going to turn it right, wrong side out, just like this. Oh, I thought I cut that off. So we're going to turn our bag wrong side out. You're going to close it and figure out where your middle is. If it helps, you can mark it with a fabric marker. Um, I have the friction erasable gel pens. These can be um, erased with an iron. So I'm just going to mark that right there on so I know where my center point is. I'm going to do the same thing on this one. Okay, so that's my center point. So now I'm going to open it this way and match the zipper up with that center point that I just made. So there's my mark and there's, I'm gonna match the zipper with that. All right, and I'm gonna clip that on that end. And then on this end, I'm gonna unzip it three quarters of the way or so. But I'm going to keep those zippers together and do the same thing. I'm going to match that 
zipper up as if it were closed. Just like that. And it's kind of hard to do that in the air. And then I'm going to pin that. Told you guys this is really easy. Okay, so now all we have to do is sew right down here, all the way down. You're, when you get to the zipper, we're going to sew right here. Go all the way down. When you get to the zipper, go back and forth a few times. Make sure you're not hitting this metal zipper stop. If you're using a long zipper, it should be sticking out here. But you're just going to sew back and forth right here, and then sew off the edge. Same thing here. You're going to sew from here, back and forth, and here. Now, if you want a little tab like this on yours, this is the time to put that in. So, let's see if I got something handy I could use for a tab so I don't have to iron one. Oh, I know. I can use some ribbon here. I just happen to have some ribbon behind me that I think, oh, that doesn't really match. Let me find a different color. Let's use, well, I'm just gonna use a yellow ribbon, but you can just use a piece of fabric. I just happen to have this handy. So all you would do is make your little loop. You're just gonna take a piece of fabric and however long you want it, this is probably four inches, fold it in half. And if you want to have the little tab sticking out, you're gonna stick that right in between here with the open ends up here. The folded end is inside, okay? So we can stick that in there. And you can do it on both ends, you can do it on one end, whatever floats your boat. I'll put one there. And I'll do one on this end. Actually, I'm gonna use one of these. I may have little tags I had made that say Ace and Evie. I'm gonna use that for my tab on this end. Oops, this end. So I'm just going to put that right inside this way. The folded side's going towards the middle of the bag. All right. And clip that back up. Okay, so now we're just going to sew those short edges. Again, we're going to back, go back and forth over the zippers. Okay. Let me put my other presser put it back on. What is going on here? I am having bobbin issues. There we go. I literally just vacuumed my room, so of course I'm throwing threads all over the floor. All right, so here we go. So there's a seam right here on the edge. I'm just gonna try to follow that seam. That's just gonna make it easy for me to stay straight. And it's already, this end's already finished, so it'll make a nice finished look. And again, we're going to backstitch. Go forward a couple, and then backstitch. So now I'm coming up to that zipper, remove my clips, make sure everything's straight. And I'm going to go over the zipper, back stitch, over the zipper, back stitch, over the zipper. Finish off the end, 
backstitch, and off the end. We're done with that side. Got all these threads hanging out on the table. All right, now we're gonna do the other end. Same exact thing. I'm gonna try to hit it right in that seam. Take a few stitches, back stitch, and we're off and running. Take my clips out as I go. And right off the edge. And that's it. All right. We're almost done. Unbelievably easy, right? All right. So now, just double check your seams. Make sure there's nothing open. Everything looks good. Looks great. So take some scissors, not your good cutting scissors, and snip those ends off of your ribbon tails and your zipper. Perfect. All right, so right now you have a flat zipper pouch. You could use it just like this, but we wanna make it into a box. So what we have to do, you're gonna open this up, and you're going to, let's go ahead and unzip it all the way. You're gonna open it up, let's see. If I show it this way, it'll be easier. You're gonna open it up and put that seam down the middle like this. All right. Now what I like to do, I made a little template, a little triangle template, but if you don't have that, you can just use a ruler and one of your fabric markers and you're going to measure Oops, not working that way. You're gonna measure two inches, make a mark. Two inches on this side, make a mark, and then you're gonna join those two marks and draw a straight line. Now what I have done is create some templates that I use when I make these boxes, box corners, because it makes it a whole lot faster. And I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna do three inches on this one, I have different sizes, so you can do whatever you want. The, this one that I did was a two inch, and it's kind of short and flat. I wanna make it a little more high and narrow, so I'm gonna go with a bigger one. So on this one, I would measure down three inches, make a mark, three inches, make a mark, and then connect those two marks. So I'm just gonna use my template, lay it down, and draw my line. So there I have a line. Can you see that? Now all you want to do is take that under your, over to your machine and you're going to stitch right on that line, back stitch at the beginning and the end, and make sure that when you do your stitching that you go all the way off both edges so that you get a nice corner. If you start in like a quarter of an inch or something, it's not going to box out right for you. So let's go. I start in on the fabric a little bit and then I back stitch off of it and then go back. And then I'm pushing that seam flat. And then I'm going to back stitch and right off. Perfect. So this is what we have. Now we're going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to put the zipper towards this. I'm putting it towards the camera for you guys, but. You're gonna put it like that. You're gonna fold it like this so that, see this was your side. So you're gonna make that side line up with that seam, just like that. Use your template or measure three inches, three inches or two inches, depending if you want it short and squat or you want it a little more high and deep. So I'm gonna do that. And I just made my template in design space. I made a rectangle and I made it three inches on the sides and four inches wide. 
So there you go. See? We're going to do the same thing. We have to do this to all four corners. I have a running foot pedal here. All right. Get that one done. to trim my strings as I go. All right, so we got this corner. These are both done. That one's sewed, that one's sewed. So see if you folded it in half where the zipper's this way. Now we gotta do this end. And it's kind of the same thing. If you just fold that, push that in the middle, it kind of naturally does it. But I like to just focus on one corner at a time. So here's the opposite end. This is the how it was. Open up that zipper. Push that corner in like this. Make sure it's centered with where the bottom was. So like this. Use your template or measure. Three inches, three inches, make a line. And I would recommend doing one at a time, not don't go marking all of them because unless your fabric is folded exactly the right way, um, it's real easy to get it out of alignment and then your corners aren't gonna match up. I'm opening up that seam. And you guys can pen this, you don't have to. I'm pretty new to sewing and I probably should pen more, but I'm finding for me it's a bigger hassle and it makes me stop and then my seams go kooky. So do what works for you. That's my motto. What I do is probably not the right way. Okay, so this one, one more time, holding that in. You guys got it. You got it down now, right? And so this one. Now I haven't tried cutting. Um, that was what I was going to do today. Was try to cut this quilt fabric on the maker. See if that would work. But with this you don't have, there's really no cutting, so you don't need it. Uh, I get an extra thread there. Alright, if any of you sew, can you tell me why sometimes I end up with three threads coming out of my bobbin area? I don't know what that's all about, but it happens all the time. Okay, so again, I highly recommend making your templates. I just lost one. But I just keep those on hand all the time. I have a three by three by four and a two and a half by two and a half by two and a half and a two by two or I'm sorry, two and a half by two and a half by three and a half and a two by two by three. Um, I lost one. I'll find it. Okay, so here we are. We've sewn those seams. You can run an iron over that and that'll disappear. Uh, I can go ahead and turn my iron on if you want me to prove it. All right, so now you're gonna take your fabric scissors and you're just going to cut this excess off and leave it like a quarter inch away from your seam. Do it over here. I know you're going, oh, she's cutting it okay. These bags are so easy to make and they make great gifts. I've made them for my daughter and my soon-to-be daughter-in-law. All right, and one more. All right, so we got those corners done. Now, what I would do is take it over to my serger and serge the ends, but if you don't have a serger, here, my iron is hot. I can get it over here. I just want to show you how those lines disappear. If I can find it. Oh, here it is. So there's the line. You can see it. Watch this. You just run a hot iron over it. Ta-da! It's gone. So I'm not 
gonna do all of them. I just wanted to show you that it works. Those, so the, it's the Pilot Friction Pens. F-R-I-X-I-O-N. They're the erasable gel pens. Okay, so if you don't have a serger just, and you wanna keep this looking nice and it keeps it from fraying, just put your machine on a zigzag stitch and just run that along that edge. Right. I'm not going to do all the edges, but I want to show you what it looks like. This machine is having serious bobbin issues. The bobbin just jumped right out. So I don't know if you can see that or not, but I just zigzagged along the edge. Now I have a serger, so I'll show you what that looks like. What I would do to finish my edges, I just put it on the serger. Any of you want to know what the serger does? And that's what the serger does. It just puts a nice finish on the edges. So I'll go back off camera and do the other two corners. But your bag is done. You want to see? Turn my glasses off so I can see. You're gonna poke your corners out. Yep, I like the bigger corners on this better. Ta-da! There's our little tab. And the finished bag, if you use the corners like I did, is now almost five inches tall and 10 inches long. Whereas this one, I use the exact same placemat, but I use the smaller corners, the smaller triangles on the corners. So this one is 11 inches long, but only three inches tall, where this one's five inches tall. So let me hope. Get them both fluffed up so you can see them. There's the difference. So, a super simple gifts, you guys. Really easy to make. And I do like having the tabs because it makes it easier to zip. So any other questions other than, I really do like this sewing machine, but I don't know what what its problem is today. Always something when you're live. What are the measurements for the bag? For the finished bag, Sheila? Well, let me pull the camera up. You guys don't need to see the dust anymore. Oh, for the um, the placemat, what the placemat was? The placemat is um, 14 by 19. This one was a quilted reversible placemat. I did not cut it down at all. Any other questions? Is this video quality better, you guys? I know I asked earlier, but I, I'm still testing, trying to figure out. Would, could you use these placemats to make a bunch of earbud covers? You could, absolutely. You just cut the circles out and, yep. Yep, and especially these, these would, these work really nice. If you cut this on the seam, this is actually two pieces of fabric. So you could do um, your earbud covers like this one could be your lining and one could be the outside uh, on the quilted fabric uh, absolutely you just wouldn't do the lining you would just do all one piece oh you guys didn't tell me i got mascara under my eye wow i'm using it for a mirror guys sorry so for those who just joined us we just made these from 
a quilted placemat. These placemats are from Walmart. Looking forward to making something with this one. I don't think I'm going to do the box pouch out of that one, though. I think I'm going to do like a clutch sort of thing. I don't know if you can see it, but it's got like little uh, tassels hanging out of it. I think it's so cute. And then it would be navy on the inside. Any other questions? Yeah, these are super easy. And again, you guys, um, this is the other style that I made. And I did the exact same thing. I showed you where you would have sewed it. You put the, put the zipper in just the same, same exact way. And then you would sew those sides up. And then I just did the same box corner on the end. I just used that triangle and boxed the corners on this. So it made a really nice, um, it's just a nice deep pouch. So another great gift and you could put like um, some makeup in here for a gift. Is the stuffing cotton? What stuffing? And this? Um, I don't know. It is, let's see. Yeah, you wouldn't want to use it for a bowl koozie if you're going to put it in the microwave. Um, fiber content, 100% polyester. So you don't want to make the bowl koozie out of that. Oops. But you can make the bowl koozie if you're not going to put it in the microwave. So, any other questions? Um, yes, it's polyester. These, these have polyester uh, filling in them or batting. So you could use this. You could make any kind of um, zipper pouch. You could make the earbuds. You could make table runner. They have. They also have this fabric, uh, this quilted fabric in the table runner at Walmart, which would give you a longer thing. Uh, Guadalupe, it depends. The um, if you're going to use the whole placemat without cutting it down, your zipper needs to be at least 14 inches. I use like an 18 just because I like the extra length to keep it out of my um, out of my way, the zipper pull. Uh, did I miss a question, Glinda? I can't, I don't have the keyboard in front of me so I can't scroll back. If, I'm, if you guys have a question, go ahead and repost it because I can't go back. What's this about? Glenda, can you uh, remove, please? Where do I get my zippers from? I order my zippers on Amazon or Etsy. Um, there's a place on Etsy called Zip It. I get a lot of zippers there. And there's one on, on Amazon where you get like 50 zippers for $25 or something like that. I think they come out to like 50 cents a piece. Thank you, Glenda. But um, like this was just a bag of, when I buy zipper, I, when I first started buying zippers, I bought um, short, you know, like the six, nine, eight inch zippers. And now all I buy are long ones and I just cut them down because they're cheap enough, and this is from Zip It Zippers. Zip It. Zip It Zippers. But I just, I just like to have the long ones. Uh, yeah, I think they do have an Amazon store, Zip It Zippers. I, I just go to Etsy. Yeah, there's all kinds of, um, the only thing about when you order the, some of them on Amazon, you don't get to pick your colors. So I like to pick my colors. 
Where inside Walmart do you find these placemats? They are, they are, they're right by the, in my Walmart, they're right by the kitchen towels and the tablecloths. She has a whole section, Pioneer Woman. Um, like I said, she's got table runners, she's got tablecloths. You could, if you bought a tablecloth, I think they're $13.99 for 50 by, might have been 72. It's a pretty good deal, $13.99 for all that fabric. And it's, I mean, it's nice. This is heavy. This isn't just like a regular cotton. So any other questions? Can you make curling iron covers or not with polyester filling? I don't know. Um, I would think that would burn because that's the problem with polyester is it melts. Yes, cheaper than buying fabric. I love this Pioneer Woman stuff. I also bought some of her bowls today. I bought a bowl that has this exact pattern on it. You can probably get them online, Glinda. You should not use poly for anything hot. Mary says no polyester for anything hot. I know it melts, so I'm pretty new to sewing. So. For those of you who know better than I, thanks so much. All right, guys, I don't want to keep you any longer. We've been live for about f almost 50 minutes, so go enjoy your Saturday. And if you guys post or if you guys make these, please tag me. I love to see. I, it makes me feel so good when I see somebody make something that they got from the video. So. Please tag me if you make them, and I will see you guys later. Go get your placemats at Walmart. There's going to be a run on them. I'm thinking. All right. See ya. Bye-bye.